Summer holidays were fun. I'd take my little brother to the local park and that's where we'd play on the swings or we'd run around with balls and play games like Batman and Damsel in Distress. My brother, he was always the damsel who needed rescuing and I was a tomboy so I always had to be the hero for the game that I would script. And then we'd pick daisies on the walk home and we'd give them to my mum. By the time we'd get home, the flowers are always pretty wilted and dying from our sweaty hands, holding onto them, dropping them and picking them back up. And then the next day, my brother and I, we set up a cardboard box for a magic show on the footpath just outside our house and we wrote magic show on the path in chalk. We practiced our tricks for like five minutes and then we waited for customers to walk past and pay five cents to watch the show that we'd only just rehearsed. And not one single person walked past. Not one single person that day and all the next and that was it. It was enough for us. It was time for a new game. When the weather was pretty bad, we'd stay inside and we'd play dinosaurs and Play-Doh and colouring or whatever. And then when the weather was good, we'd take off again in our bikes and we'd explore the streets and come back with scratches and bruises and rocks and tadpoles. Whatever we could find out there. We'd go out in our bikes and jump in creeks. Everything kids used to do. This was the 80s, so it wasn't unusual to see kids roaming the streets with mud all over them and no parental supervision and no mobile phones. Pretty much as soon as the street lights come on, it was time to get your butt home. And then school was back. It felt weird because I'd forgotten all about school. I just felt like these summer holidays went on for so long that I found it hard to believe that we had to go back to school at all. But I liked school and the teachers liked me. They praised me for my artwork at a young age and one time my teacher was so impressed with the song I sang in front of the class that he sent me to the only two other classrooms in the whole school to sing it for those classes as well. I was so excited and I came back to the classroom with stickers all over me. Which, I mean, that's the goal, right? That's the goal in you too, to get stickers. But what no one knew was that song wasn't my own. So in class one day, the whole class, which was grade two, three and four, we were all told to write a story. I had a really good imagination and I could conjure up all sorts of wild adventures, but this time I didn't. Over the school holidays, I'd been reading a series of naughty books and my favourite one had a song in it. I memorised this song and I sang it the whole holiday, so I knew every single word and I put my own tune to it just for fun. So this day I just copied this song down and I decided to take credit for it all on my own. I assumed that the teacher had never read it and I was right and thank goodness none of the kids in my class picked up on it and they didn't seem to have known it or read it either and I totally got away with it. Everyone believed that I was so talented to have created this song and melody all on my own in just a few minutes in class and that I had the confidence to get up and sing it in front of the whole school. <laughs> but yeah, I was a fraud. That was me in grade two when I was seven years old in a small school in a small suburb where every parent knew everything about everyone. I turned eight over the school holidays and I was off to my new school, so mum walked me into the classroom. School had already started and there was no time to meet any of the other kids in the playground and I was totally fine with that because I was really nervous about my first day. So I was led into the demountable classroom where all the grade three students were sitting on the floor with their legs crossed and the teacher quickly introduced me to the class and then she pointed to a spot on the floor where I should sit. And I sat next to this girl who said her name was Carmen and I just stared at her shoes. I was way too shy to talk to her so I just studied the buckles on her shoes and I thought they were really cool. Everyone else had laces and she had these fancy pants buckles. But I also went from being this chatterbox of a kid at my old school to being all shy and awkward. But this year, it wasn't so bad for me actually at this school. I made friends really quickly and I remained friends with my best mate from my old school, but it wasn't like my old school. My old school had maybe 80 students in the whole school and there were no groups or cliques. Everyone just played together no matter what age like all the way from kindergarten to grade six, we all just played together. But not at this school, this one was different. We all played within our own age groups or classroom and there were two major groups. We had the popular group and the DAGs. We weren't called nerds or geeks or anything like that, we got called DAGs and it wasn't in a bullying kind of way and we didn't feel picked on and I mean, <laughs> I'm still a DAG to this day and I'm absolutely fine with that. There was this one boy who teased me every day and called me fat and I didn't get it. Like, I knew I wasn't fat, and when I told my mum about it, she said that the boy must have liked me because that's what boys do. They'll tease girls that they like, and that didn't help me much either because I just didn't understand it. It just, it didn't make sense to me that someone would be mean to someone that they liked. And the next day, he would just call me fat again. 
I'd never been teased or bullied before, so I really just didn't understand it. I had pale skin and I was covered in freckles and I had really buffy hair, especially if the weather got to it. And I mean, people would mention these things, but just as an observation, like there was no malice. It was just like saying, geez, you're tall, when it's obvious. But true or not, this kid was just being mean and it kind of hurt. I mean, of course I've got thicker skin now. I couldn't care less what people said about my appearance. Like, seriously, who cares? But I don't know, at eight, kind of stings. And over the next few years in primary school, I did get fat. I started filling out around my stomach and my face got chubby. And then I was nominated for sports captain, which was so weird because that meant that I had to compete in everything at school and I was terrible at sports. And everyone knew that I was terrible at sports. But I still had to run my fat ass in every race knowing that I would lose. And everyone watching their captain come in last was pretty embarrassing. The other captains were mortified that I had a place sitting with them at school assemblies. What had happened was, and <laughs> I know this is actually kind of sweet. My brother had all of his friends vote for me, but they were supposed to vote for me as school captain or vice captain, definitely not sports captain. I had no idea that this was going on because I didn't even want to be the captain of anything and I never asked to be, but secretly they had all gotten together and voted because they thought it would be something nice and something went a bit skew if in their planning and I ended up as sports captain. And that meant chubby me could no longer get out of sporting events and I was a master at getting out of anything to do with sports and I could no longer do that. I mean, it's funny now, but those years, oh my goodness, that year was a bit of a challenge. And by the end of the year, I was feeling a bit gross about myself in my body, but it had nothing to do with the boy who made those comments or how awkward I felt at school. It was about how I was feeling because of the stuff that had started happening between my stepfather and I at home. Okay, so I don't know how well the colors have come out in this piece on video. And my chips are going crazy at the moment and I don't have a microphone set up, so I'm hoping this turns out all right. Um, Okay, one of my chooks is broody and she's been sitting on unfertilized eggs for a week so I'm going to have to get some fertilized eggs to chuck under her because I would really like some little chicks running around but she's freaking out the other hands because she won't let them anywhere near her nest so I'm going to have to fix that up soon. But anyway, back to this. Um, I am absolutely frothing over the colours. They've got this sort of neon 80s vibe about it and I'm absolutely chuffed with this colour palette. I love the texture through it. I really love texture. And when I use the heat gun, it sort of activates the, um, the acrylic paint and it bubbles up and I adore it and I do it all the time. You'll also see me constantly throwing paint at a canvas. It's one of my most favorite things to do and part of my style. And I just love that chaos with the simple design of the piece. I just, I don't know, I just, I love daisies. I love that this has this sort of summery feel about it. Uh, if you like my painting, let me know. If not, that's cool. It is what it is. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.